So today I wanted to share with you something that took me a little while to get used to early on in my career, and that is SSH keys. Now you may have heard the term SSH, it stands for secure shell, and it's pretty much a way for two different computers to communicate securely uh, over an encrypted connection. I'm in a Linux-based system here, uh, but you should be able to do this in macOS or even Windows has support for it now. You should be able to type ssh-keygen, uh, and then I'm going to pass it a flag of T and give it a specific uh, encryption algorithm called ED25519. I like this one because it's supposed to be fast, more secure, and it generates less code than something like RSA. So when we hit that, uh, it's going to ask us where we want to save it. In general, it will, by default, it'll save to your .ssh folder. I'll just leave that by default. Do we want to add a passphrase for it to protect it? Not today. And the same passphrase. And then it's going to do this little bit of alien gobbledygook. And it's going to say, hey, we generated your file. So I can verify that my file was generated if I say ls my ssh folder and i can see now there's uh two other files in there that were not there before one is the id underscore ed25519 file and the other one is the same name with dot pub those two files are my ssh key pairs the one ending in dot pub is the public one that is the one that is safe for me to share the other one is the private one no one should see that not even your mom so you might be thinking to yourself cool i've got two files on my computer now why does that even matter? And I think one of the most interesting use cases is for giving access to a remote computer. So I have this brand spanking new server that I just spun up on Linode today, and it has literally nothing on it. It's just an Ubuntu server, and I haven't touched it since. And since deploying, it gives me this uh, IP address that I can try and access using SSH. So I'm going to copy that command. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste that into the terminal and see what we get. And that computer is going to respond by prompting me for the root access password in order to actually get access to the computer. Now I created the password so I can type that in and as long as I did it correctly, I can now get into the computer. So we can see that I'm logged in and that's great. There's only one problem is that login can take time and I have to remember all the passwords for all the machines that I wanna create. And this is where SSH key pairs come in because I can actually store a copy of my public key on that computer, which means I don't need to authenticate with a password every time I wanna log in. So right now I'm back on the terminal on my machine and I'm going to tell a little cat to go into my SSH folder and read the contents of my public file out to me. This is gonna send a little tiny cat into the file and spits out this result. And then I can take that, the contents of that file and copy it into my clipboard and I can get back into the remote server that I was in. Enter the password one more time. So now we can do something interesting. I'm in the remote server here and I can use my favorite uh, little terminal editor to get into the SSH folder and modify the authorized keys file. I'm going to put a little comment to say that this is Austin Gill and then I'm going to paste in the contents of my public key. I can hit uh, control X and then Y and then enter to save out the contents of that file. And we can confirm that by using the little cat command again and having the, telling the cat to tell us what's inside of the authorized keys. So now with that in place, I can exit out of that remote computer. And from my local machine, if I try to SSH into it again, I don't even get prompted for the password, I just get right in. Now that's really handy and it saved me a lot of time and I don't have to remember all of these passwords. The other cool thing about this system is you can add other people's public keys to the, that authorized key file and give other people access. And if you ever want to revoke that access, you can just remove their public keys from that authorized keys file. So it's a pretty handy way to share access. And SSH keys are used in all sorts of different services. For example, uh, GitHub uses them. So I have my public key stored in my GitHub repo, which means when I want to push commits to GitHub, I don't have to enter my password in order to 
send those commits. It just uses my uh, private key on my local machine and connects that to my public key on the remote server and it authenticates me and the passwords uh, or the the commits just go right out to GitHub. It's pretty handy and it saves me a lot of time. So I hope you thought that was helpful and I hope that this saves you some time. And if you want to connect over SSH, let me know.